What is up guys, welcome back to the podcast. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're gonna be doing another follow-up to the Giffray versus Prince Andrew case. That's Virginia Roberts versus Prince Andrew. I've made two previous videos regarding this uh, case. You guys can go check them out. I'll be linking them in the top right-hand corner. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about how the uh, grace period for Prince Andrew to show up in court, according to the summons that he was given, has expired. So that date was August 31st. So as I covered in my last video, this is a summons that was issued by the clerk in the Southern District of New York, um, where Judge Kaplan is the overseeing judge. And he had 21 days, as you can see here, uh, from the service of this summons to show up in court. And he has not done that. So this summons was served on 810. Right. So that was 22 days ago. Uh, he had 21 days to respond. So 31st was the expiring date and he didn't show up. So let me show you guys the docket. Uh, nothing has been filed in the docket. This is the uh, official Pacer docket. Uh, as you can see, the last legal paper that was filed was on 812. And that was the initial pretrial conferencing uh, logistical stuff. Uh, but anyways, the no, nothing has been filed by Prince Andrew's side. All of these were filed by Virginia Roberts and the uh, clerk. So the summons was issued on 810. You can see it here. And that's the summons that I'm showing you guys right here. As I mentioned in my last video, if Prince Andrew, the defendant, does not show up, then the court will award default judgment in favor of the plaintiff, in this case, Virginia Roberts. So that's what's going to happen now that he hasn't shown up. OK, obviously, uh, the plaintiff has to file again for a default judgment hearing. I'll, I'll go over all the steps of that in a second here. I'm going to explain to you guys exactly how the judgment uh, by default is handled um, in federal court. So I'll go over that. But let's first look at what Prince Andrew is doing. So I rarely rely on gossip sites like The Sun here because sometimes their gossip is right. Sometimes it's wrong. Any rational person who cares about the truth should not be relying on The Sun or any other gossip site because it's all innuendo conspiracy theories and sometimes facts but very rarely and you don't know which one is which so i don't rely on these sites unless i can corroborate it so he hasn't been seen they, they're saying here what they're saying here actually makes sense so they're saying that prince andrew has been hiding to avoid being served the summons that was uh put out by the clerk's office in the southern district of new york this summons that we just went over and so they're saying that according to their sources from inside these royal analysts and other people they're saying the following Following. Prince Andrew, not seen in public for 19 days, is set to be refusing to leave his home, which is set in 98 private acres in Windsor Grape Park, Berks. If he refuses to accept the civil summons issued by the New York court clerk three weeks ago, the Duke risks facing judgment by default next month. That part is true. Um, and they go on to say, an insider said, more attempts will be made to hand the papers to Andrew. But a source said, quote, there's no way he will risk poking his head outside right now. He will stay out of view. A spokesperson for the Duke did not wish to comment. So that's what the Sun says. As always, they don't name their sources. So I can't really believe any of this 100 percent. But given the fact that he hasn't shown up to answer this summons, it kind of makes sense that he might be hiding. So like I said, don't believe these sites unless you have other corroborating evidence or supporting evidence or it makes sense logically. In this case, there is supporting evidence. The fact that he didn't show up for the summons indicates that he might be hiding. So this this story by the sun is not insane. OK, they do carry a lot of insane stories, which is why I stopped trusting these Daily Mail and the Sun type of uh, outlets, because they put out information that they don't even verify and turn most of it turns out to be BS. So I stopped relying on or reading these things. OK, but nobody else is talking about this and they're the only ones who are. And the only alternative I have is to look at what the legal papers are uh, saying and what's happening in the courts and nothing is happening in the courts. So that's why I resorted to even looking this up uh, about what they're saying. So like I said, do I'm not, I am not endorsing the sun here. I want to make that clear. I don't want to endorse these gossip sites. But uh, if you want to, you know, if you're a really rational person, you know how to evaluate evidence, then you can read these. But do not believe what they're saying at face value. So I want to get that very clear. So one last thing I want to cover here before we move on to the explanation of of uh, judgment by default is Prince Andrew is once again being asked by the DOJ to come and talk to them. So as you may remember, when Trump and uh, Barr were in power back last year, they asked him to come and talk to the DOJ back then, and he refused. He lied to the public and said that he was willing to cooperate with any legal investigation that was going on into Jeffrey Epstein and his associates. 
But when the DOJ asked to speak to him, he said no. And the DOJ didn't force him. Barr said that we're not we're not forcing him to come. We're not uh, demanding that he comes. And when I heard Barr say that, it was very clear that they didn't want to muffle any diplomatic feathers by, you know, forcing a British royal to come and uh, testify. So it's pretty pathetic that the DOJ was scared of the royals. Uh, that's what I thought back then. And it seems like it's still the case because even when Biden is in power, He's still not forcing Andrew to come and testify. And but and to be fair, the DOJ doesn't have any criminal charges against him. So that's why they can't force him. So there's some legal sense that that makes sense here. But they should be putting more diplomatic pressure on Britain to make him come, especially because there's a civil suit pending as well. So I know I know technically the DOJ can't get involved in civil suits that are separate from their investigations. Uh, but nevertheless, they can use some di diplomatic pressure uh, from the DOJ to try to get him to come to cooperate. But as of right now, they're not doing that. OK, so now let's move on to default judgment. OK, so I want to cover this for you guys in case people didn't know how this worked. OK, so default judgment takes place as it explains here. When a defendant is summoned to appear before the court in a case brought by a plaintiff, but fails to respond to the legal order. The judge can rule for default judgment and thereby decide the case in the plaintiff's favor. The defendant, though not present before the court, is obliged to abide by the court's ruling for default judgment and is subject to any and all punishment requested by the court. So that is default judgment in a nutshell. So next we go over the standard according to the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, Rule 55. There are rules that are set forth that the plaintiff has to abide by even if the defendant doesn't show up. So basically, Virginia Roberts has to go through a hearing and present evidence before she can get damages from the court. And since there's no jury trial in this because uh, Prince Andrew didn't show up to court, so there's not going to be any jury trial. So the judge is going to have to determine damages. Usually the jury is the one who hears the case and determines what the punitive and compensatory damages are. That's usually how it works. Madam Foreperson, you've reached a verdict. We, the jury, find in favor of the plaintiff and award compensatory damages in the amount of $950,000 and punitive damages in the amount of $2 million. But here, when it comes to default judgment, the judge is the one who's going to be making that decision most of the time. There's some exception to that, uh, but in federal courts, that's usually how it works. So the way it works is there's default judgment by the clerk and default judgment by the court. In this case, it's going to be a default judgment by the court because the facts of the case are very complicated here. It's not a simple thing. So when the facts of the case are simple, then the clerk of the court can issue um, default judgment. OK, default judgment by the court requires a much more complicated process of proving uh, damages, meaning presenting evidence and other things that the plaintiff has to do before they can get money from the court. Right. In all other cases, the party must apply to the court for a default judgment. If the party against whom a default judgment is sought has appeared personally or by representative, that party or its representative must be served with written notice of the application at least seven days before the hearing. In this case, that doesn't apply because there's no, Prince Andrew didn't show up to court and nor a representative of Prince Andrew showed up in court. As I showed you guys, no documents have been filed with the court when it comes to this case. So nobody showed up. So that part doesn't apply. So before the judge determines any damages against the uh, defendant, they go through this process, not exactly in this order, uh, but usually they try to establish the truth of the claims here. So basically, Virginia Roberts has to present some kind of evidence that shows that her claims against Prince Andrew are true. So that's uh, C here. Establish the truth of any allegation by evidence. Investigate the matter and any other related matters uh, to this case. Determine the amount of damages according to um, the uh, crimes that are alleged here and conduct an accounting of uh, exactly how much he's going to be paid off. So there are there are court standards for what is paid out in cases like this based on legal precedents that have been set by juries before. So after looking at the facts of the case and looking at the evidence that's presented by Virginia Roberts, Judge Kaplan is going to have to determine whether she has enough evidence to meet the legal standard. And if he determines that she does, then he will determine, like I said, based on past cases, based on court precedent, exactly how much Prince Andrew has can, is going to have to pay out when it comes to punitive and or compensatory damages. 
And I'm not even going to try to guess how much that is because even though there are legal standards, it depends on the case, it depends on the strength of the evidence in each case, and it depends on the judge and how much he's willing to, uh, you know, how far he's willing to go when it comes to uh, the damages he's willing to put on the defendant. Now, when it comes to Judge Kaplan, he does have a history of being an elitist when it comes to other cases I've mentioned before, like the Donzinger case. So that might play a role or it might not. Um, you know, I can't say for sure exactly how he's going to rule in this particular issue, but given his past, I'm a little bit dubious. But as I always say, I'm fair, so I'm going to wait for him to make his determination before I make any claims about his motives. Uh, so we'll see what he determines. There's nothing we can do, really. Technically speaking, Regina Roberts has won this case because the other side didn't even show up. Prince Andrew didn't even show up. Technically, he's in contempt of court, right? So... Technically, she's won, but like I said, they have to go through a process where they determine damages, so she doesn't automatically uh, get money, right? The judge has to look at the facts of the case and determine if she has a valid claim. If she does, then she will rule in her favor, and she'll most likely get um, you know, some form of compensation uh, for winning the case. So right now, we're waiting to see what the judge is going to do. The whole case is basically in Judge Kaplan's hands. Okay, and that's basically it for this update. Uh, as always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all for future videos, and share this video with other people who are interested in this case. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon by going to the link in the end of the video during the credits and also in the description box down below. With that being said, I'll see you guys all in my next video. As always, peace.